In this next example, we're going to be looking at Animo. Um, Animo is a pretty complex idea, uh, but it adds a lot of cool functionality to what your keyframes can do. So we got to set up a little bit in order to work with Animo, but we'll try to keep it basic and pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is create uh, just a quick square, and we're going to set up uh, maybe... Yeah, we'll set up a little uh, position uh, echo, I guess. So we'll create a count here of eight into a composition. We'll set an echo, and we're just going to call this temp thing um, because this is just going to be an example uh, for what we want to do. So next, I'm going to go on over to scatter, and I'm going to enable scatter, and I'll turn up these options and turn up these ranges, and uh, that looks really nice. And I'll just set a keyframe here. We'll go back and press U to see uh, any keyframes on the layer and go back and set this to just zero. So we now have this little animation that's basically, a, you know, a silly little explosion, um, nothing too fancy and uh, it's pretty simple. So we're going to obviously want to do more with this, but it would be really cool if we could kind of work with these keyframes together. So we'll select these keyframes and make it an animal controller. So in this window, we have a key option and a shy option. Once again, uh, familiar modules, I hope. We'll go and click key um, if I don't close that window and click animal. So we're going to name our animal controller and we'll call this something like animal controller. <laughs> uh, very creative. And what this does is it creates other keyframes exactly where your first and last keyframe were of whatever keyframes you had selected. So this works over more than two keyframes. You could have hundreds, and it's basically going to sum up however many keyframes it needs uh, to make this animation um, a lot better. So you could imagine this almost as a way to retime and control your animation. Um, but what's great is when you have these uh, properties that you normally can't uh, change the easing of as easy uh, because they're multi-dimensional, you now have this linked up property uh, and basically a whole new world of animation, um, which is really, really handy because uh, you have easing for uh, all these properties at once. So you can go and design some really, really awesome curves and they would be really difficult with uh, real keyframes. So if I go to this X range, uh, this was my original keyframes. And if I click the post expression graph, you're going to see uh, what the new expression is. So uh, that's very nice to see. We'll go back and uh, preview this animation and see that little retime that, you know, doesn't look that good, but for this example, it's going to be fine. So we're going to look at this animal controller's other option called loop. If you click this enable button, you're going to see that we can have this first option, which is a cycle of our keyframes. So not that cool. Or we can go to this ping pong one, which is basically going to go back and forth through whatever we have attached to our animal controller. So if we were to, for example, create some more animation, but actually use some of the Midas delay stuff. Uh, we'll actually set that up right now. And then we can just toss that onto the controller really easy. So since we uh, were working with position, we'll set a keyframe and maybe just, you know, do something. It doesn't really matter. Add a little bit of easing, click our animo, and we don't need any options because we want to attach this to our other one. So we'll just type in the name we want. And you're going to see that we now have had that property added to the Midas system uh, with a little bit of a loop. But this works with the whole delay and whatever other settings, magnetism or scatter that you had attached. Uh, but it's just a nice way to work with uh, everything at once. Animo can be really, really powerful. So uh, that's a cool little option. But the one that really gets interesting is interpreting motion and pushing it back into other animation. So what this means is we're going to turn off this loop. And we're also going to uh, set up another layer. So if I create uh, an object here, obviously it's going to be a square. And we'll move the anchor point. I'm going to call this my trigger layer, uh, just for naming purposes. We'll select the animal controller and toggle down into the spectrum module, uh, which is really, really sweet. And so this, once again, works with any kind of property, layer, keyframe, anything you could imagine. Uh, but yeah, so we'll jump on into it. We'll enable specter and we'll enable effects and masks, and we're going to select our trigger layer as a trigger. So what this does is basically saying whatever size this little null controller is, is going to interpret the surface area based on the triggers overlap of the controller. So Spectre is kind of like a little ghost, and it'll tell you um, when it's being interacted with. If I move my square in there, you're going to see if I look at my my specter trigger, um, it's taking up 49% of my little specter layer. But at the same time, 49% of my animation is being done. So what this allows you to do is basically 
uh, create these dynamic scenes if you wanted to. Um, we could imagine maybe a foot stepping on some grass and you can get this live um, kind of reaction to whatever's happening. So it's really nice to set up something, design something, and then be able to change one thing, but have the interaction and animation you created uh, become something else.